Phaedra. Um, okay, so yeah, the idea here is that we're in Leon, Iowa with Sibylla Brown, who's the mother of Alex Brown. And the ex exhibition that we're putting up at Cat House Proper at the moment is uh, titled Alex Brown Presence Chamber. Um, the title Presence Chamber is taken from a painting of Alex's from 1998, although that painting is not in the exhibition. Although in a sense it is because of the title and there's also gonna be a slide uh, of the painting. Will, we have that little um, slide reader. You remember that thing? Yeah. So the, our task today is pretty simple. We just have to hang uh, two paintings and then there's a shelf in the entrance you'll see over there where there's gonna be a portfolio of drawings. So we gotta organize the portfolio. There's gonna be about 10 drawings in there. And then there's a small painting that goes over the shelf um, uh, called, uh, I think, Girl, although we're thinking of Girl as an angel because she's sort of looking over the show. So when you come around a corner, the first thing you're gonna see is, is Angel or Girl, who's gonna be directly addressing the visitor. And then you'll see the drawing and they're gonna be in a portfolio, which one can look through and uh, there'll be people there uh, assisting um, the, the viewing of the portfolio, which will be, um, um, yeah, there and available. There's girl, ah, beautiful. See, see, she's beautiful. It reminds me of uh, the Da Vinci's angel and uh, that he painted for and Verrocchio's painting. That's, that's what uh, made me think of an angel. And uh, yeah, and the, and the big move and is the uh, shelf, on the shelf, there's gonna be a, a sheet of plexi with some rule. We got those little bubble feet, Will? We do. Yeah. So th there's a sheet of plexi that goes on the shelf and these little bubble feet so that it holds it up about an eighth inch. And under that is gonna be a drawing or a work on paper um, of, a double mirror. It's a it's a young woman looking into a mirror that's mirrored. So in the show, there's a lot of doubling and mirroring, which is something that I noticed that Alex does quite a bit in his work. And then for the presence chamber notion, um, uh, so we're kind of uh, speaking to the spirits. Alex having passed away in 2019, and this being his first uh, posthumous exhibition. Um, so twinning, you know, twinning is important when thinking about um, the spirit world. So um, mirrors as well. So um, that drawing that's going to be on the shelf to me is something of a leitmotif of the exhibition. And then we have the captain, which is uh, the largest painting that goes on sort of the primary wall. And then next to the captain is a painting titled uh, Tapestry. And Tapestry is what we think was Alex's last painting from 2018. And um, it's adjacent to the captain. And interestingly, uh, Tapestry, cause Alex's general method was to take a photograph, a found photograph, almost always, and um, lays over a mask or a grid and then paints it through the grid, transferring it and scaling it up to canvas, approximating the colors for each of the units in the grid. So you're laying a level of abstraction over top of a realistic image or realism. Whereas with tapestry, which was a new direction for him in some ways, he's, he's laying the abstraction over an already abstract pattern, which is the stripes, horizontal stripes in the tapestry. So um, you sort of have an abstraction of an abstraction. However, there's imperfections, and this is what's interesting in the carpet, which then when looked at from a distance, there, it breaks the pattern and in breaking the pattern, brings the carpet to life. You see that it's a, not just stripes, that it actually is a realistic image. Um, 
So I, uh, so maybe we should get started. What do you, what do you say, Will? What's that? Should we get started with Captain? Captain? Captain sure. first? Sure. All right. So Captain is going to go, like I'm saying, on the, what we consider the main wall. So when you come in the gallery, you come up these steps, it's kind of like a speakeasy, you come up the steps, you come in like a kind of passage of two hallways. And then when you enter into the large space, it's got like 20 foot ceilings. So it's kind of a dramatic reveal. And when you come around the corner, the first thing you see is what I'm calling the sort of primary wall, which is where a captain goes. So the, the space isn't big, but it's well appointed. Uh, it's almost a perfect 20 by 20 by 20 foot cube. So it has high ceilings. So we're just gonna get captain on the wall there, cool. And chat, so anybody anybody out there in the audience wanna, uh, you know, you can join in. You know, this is a conversation. Tracy, thanks for coming. I appreciate your comments on Instagram very much. Um, Lucy. Lucy. Hi, Lucy. Lucy's uh, on the board. Are you on the board, Lucy? I'm technically an employee, actually. Oh, you're an employee. Are mm -hmm. you the only employee? Mm -hmm. Yes. So um, for the Alex Brown Foundation? Yes. Yeah. Let me um, let me spotlight you so we can see you. <laughs> you're already a co host, so we're going to spotlight you. No, 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 I'm not going to spotlight you. I'm going to pin you. So if I pin you. Um, so how did you how did you come to be a part of the Alex Brown Foundation? I after Alex's passing, I basically told them I'll help them out in any way I can just to be a part of his legacy. And when Chris came up with the concept of the foundation, I did, please, 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 please put me on that. I'll do anything. And so my husband and I, our business aside, kind of do project management and have like knowledge of just back end things like that. Um, the web, we did the website. So it's helped us um, or basically put me in this position to take on this role as the residency coordinator is mostly what my job is. Yeah, and the website is very nice. Thank you. <laughs> kind of perfect. Um, and so you knew Alex as, as, as a friend though too, right? Yeah. I did, yeah. I met Alex in 2008, I think it was. So Sibylla, you and, because um, I, I have to say, you guys got the foundation together really quick. Well, you did a good job. He had uh, money uh, in his, uh, in his, Retirement account. Alex did. Yeah. yeah, so we used that to fund it, and we've added since. And you sold the house, right? Yeah, we sold his house and took, you know, put everything we could into uh, the foundation. Right. So, um, and then they had started this residency. That's Alex's studio, which is in this big mainframe called Mainframe Building in Des Moines, which is all painted up to look very artistic. It's like the. Mm -hmm. uh, the Brady Bunch's uh, bus. It's, it's really a studio to die for. Uh, for the studio is great. A thousand dollars a month is, is that what it costs? Is what it cost? What the rent was? Yeah, I mean it's so big, and then we're here. Our, so I I don't know if I said while we're recording, but yeah, I'm here on the residency. So um, in, in Alex's studio. So I'm working in Alex's studio while organizing the show, and also uh, they have a, a an apartment, a very nice little apartment that's close to town, close to Lucy's house, as a matter of fact. And you can walk to the studio, and um, so I've been I've been doing work in the studio and also in the apartment, and enjoying the um, the morning light because the light comes through the window and projects onto the wall. So I've been writing messages to Alex in these projections in the space. So I I get to um, that's my own little private entertainment uh, and conversation because yeah I've been kind of immersed in not only Alex, but Christopher too. I read uh, Christopher Brown, who's the brother of Alex, is also a writer. So I, I read one of his books while I'm here, um, Tropic of Kansas, mm -hmm. Kansas. Mm -hmm. I, it's hard to say without saying Capricorn. 
but I haven't asked him, but I like that he used, uh, appropriated Henry Miller. Tropic, it's called the Tropic of Kansas. Um, so what else? How's it going with the, uh, I don't see any paintings on the wall over there yet. Is anybody listening? To <laughs> um, by the way, the paintings are there in good shape. They look good. Yeah. Yeah, everything looks great. US art, US art shipping. There it is. The captain. Beautiful. So it's got D-rings on the back? No. No D-rings. Oh. So it's on a center line of um, 58, right? Yep. Looks like the right height to me. So the captain, I don't know. So, okay, one of the things that I wrote in the press release and that I also, so you, every, all of us are looking at this painting online, it looks, it's gonna look more realistic than it is when you see it in person, which is one of these amazing magical things that happens with uh, Alex's work. Um, that looks great. So the image becomes compressed and looks more realistic. Uh, I love the captain, he's got such attitude. It's great. <laughs> so when you go and see that in person, which everyone would, uh, obviously should, you're not gonna see that character. He's kind of embedded in this, uh, this uh, the web of, uh, of pattern and abstraction. And it's maybe at first even difficult to recognize a face. I know you don't believe me, but when you go, you'll see. Beautiful. Wonderful. <laughs> I, I think that I, I didn't write down. I wrote it down. It's 2015. I think the painting. Does it say on the back? Did you notice? We didn't notice it. No. That's my responsibility. I know. But um, so that's another thing we're gonna have to. I have to do the checklist yet. Um, wow, that looks great. You guys think it looks good in there? What did you say? Does it look good? You're happy with it? Looks it looks great. It looks great. Absolutely. Cool. So we do tapestry then yes. on the adjacent wall. And um, Will, like I said, I think tapestry should be like eight inches to the left of center on that wall. You hear? Uh, we, uh, David. Yes. Said it, said it again. Yeah, so Will. Yeah. So yeah, for tapestry, we're gonna do like eight in, eight inches off the center, yeah, right? Correct. If that looks good. I actually went seven. Cause, yeah? It went seven. You think seven looks better? Okay, I, I definitely, I'm kind of just grabbing eight out of the blue. Yeah, so we do a Don't wanna want get too close to the hallway there, but a little bit away from the corner. Yeah, cool. There are uh, beautiful windows at Cat House proper at 524 Project Space. So uh, Alex Brown, behind us we have a painting called Lost Planet. You were talking, that's uh, Sibylla's favorite painting, right? It's here in her entranceway for her house, which is a beautiful house, by the way, in a really nice piece of land. Can I say how much you pay for acre? Two hundred dollars <laughs> an acre. That was nineteen eighty-eight. Eighty-eight, yeah, boy, oh boy. Anyway, uh, so it's a beautiful piece of land out here in Iowa. I mean, it's actually got some hills and stuff. Oh yeah. <laughs> Whereas a lot of it's flat out here. But um, Lost Planet behind us now. Lost Planet. I knew the painting uh, in reproduction when we were looking through the uh, the repertoire, the ove. What, what we could choose from for the show. This was a, a high on the list of possibilities. And um, I ultimately didn't take it for the show because uh, the two paintings that we have in there in conjunction with the portfolio, one can, it, it, there creates a, a kind of narrative between the, the works. Um, whereas Lost Planet is sort of a complete statement on its own. 
of course, not because the other paintings too, every painting is a complete statement, but um, so Lost Planet, I find out when I get here to Des Moines that it's a place uh, and the place is a fascinating place. And it's in town on the outskirts of town down by the river uh, where they used to deposit um, lime uh, where they had, I guess, a lime factory or something. So they would, I, I, I haven't really gotten why they have to have this sludge that's like, I guess, all part of the process of um, for the lime for that they use for fertilizer or something like this in farming. So it's this huge pond that's full of lime that apparently back in when it was being used would glow at night because it was this kind of white crack. Did you ever see Lost Planet? This white crack. And kids from town, including Alex, uh, would go hang out there, you know, because it was this sort of solitary, strange landscape. It's kind of grown over now with uh, not weeds, but uh, grassy, uh, uh, like uh, grass, yeah, tall grass. But under it, but the but the sludge is still there. And I, I walked, it's frozen now. So I walked out pretty far in it and then broke the ice, which is only like an inch or two thick. And under it is all this gray sludge that is really fine clay that the lime, I guess, over the years has been just sort of mixing with the clay. It's really uh, an amazing material that I don't know if the locals here have been using for their pottery or something. I used it actually, because they use lime mixed with plaster for um, Venetian plastering techniques. And it, and it seems to work really well. So anyway, Lost Planet is the painting behind us. And it sort of, it Lost Planet, the place, I mean, there are trees around it and this is kind of a tree. But in the painting, which you can't necessarily probably see in the reproduction here, has all kinds of little um, images that are referenced in that pattern. Uh, there's, there's a text that says weekly, there's a face up there on the right, that's all intermixed with uh, uh, the image of this, this kind of landscape. So Alex would do these overlays. So he would overlay a transparency on a photo. And then if, it, it could be a grid, but it could also be an outline of an image of some sort. And then, and then that image would get embedded in uh, the representation. It's Tapestry. A, it's actually a portrait of a rock uh, star's wife. Up there? Yeah, Tapestry. I mean, uh, Lost Planet. That, that woman up there that's yeah. in the tree? You can see her knees. See the woman? Oh, that's not a tree? No, it's a woman. See the knees? Uh, and she's got the detritus of her life on the floor around her weekly. And, oh, really? Yep. See? And see, there's her radio. Yeah. Oh. Wow. So that's what uh, uh, Chris, who's Alex's brother, um, described to me Alex's titling of his works, that they're often head fakes, <laughs> which I really love that idea of being a basketball player myself. So there are head fakes in the sense that the title doesn't necessarily uh, indicate what it is that you're seeing. That, that also led me to this kind of masking, this notion of masking uh, that I write about in the press release. But hey, Lou, that looks great. What do you think? Hey, Rabia, anybody there? How's it, how is it? Looks good, right? I don't think they can hear me. Um, <laughs> there it is. So can you hear me, Lou? Luisa Rabia, by the way, my uh, partner in many things, uh, is helping out today. We appreciate that. She's a busy artist herself, so uh, and has a show opening at Peter Bloom <laughs> April first. Oh my! Yeah. So she's really busy. So she's busy, but you know she does her homework, so she's pretty ready already. Hey, Lou, you listening to me? Um. Well, yeah, it looks great. Sorry, Thanks. David, can you hear me oh, now? Yes, how nice. Yeah, I'm so sorry. Something <laughs> <like that. laughs> um, 
I think that looks great. <laughs> what do you think? Yeah, it looks great. It does. Absolutely. And the, 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 what, the tapestry looks a little high, but this it's probably just the screen uh, as far as the center line goes. No, the tapestry is perfect in relation to the other one and to the room. No, no, no. It's really good. Yeah, they look good together, right? Absolutely. They do. Yes. <laughs> you know what would be great? To see Sibylla a little bit more. Oh, Sibylla, come over he's, here. He's out of the picture, basically, out of the frame. Move over. I'm in front of the she doesn't want to block her son's painting. See, that's a good oh, mother. that's sweet. That is a good mother. That's right. But you could still get in the picture. I don't want to move the screen because I just... But maybe we should see her and not you, David. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I'm on this side. What am I supposed to do? No, we go. now we can see it. Yep. Oh, she wants me to get out of the way more. There's another painting back here, by the way, small one of Sibylla and, and Alex uh, from a photograph of Sibylla. And Alex. Oh, yeah. It's a beautiful one. I remember when I visited. Yeah, beautiful. Um, okay, so um, that's good. You know, we don't have a ton more to do. So um, we got to get that glass from the hardware store, right? Right. Yeah, Yanka went to check if uh, she Oh, I see. She went. But let's see. In the meantime, can we maybe place the drawings? Yeah, definitely, definitely. But uh, Will, does she have the top dimensions for the shelf, obviously? Yeah. yeah. Yes. So make, make sure she makes it a little bit smaller. I did. You did? I cut kind of like an eighth inch small. Yeah, yeah, because we don't want it hanging over the edge, right? That's the only real concern. And um, that's great. Cool. So should we go, Lou, through the... Uh, through the drawings? Through the portfolio, yeah. yeah. So we've got more drawings than we need, which was important because, you know, you won't have to make choices. Um, so which, which one do you want to check? The one that you shipped or the one that... Uh, that that I took uh, with we're, gonna, we're gonna put a little bit from both. First, okay, so which one should I go through first? Number one should be the clown. Okay. That just came like right here in the staircase. There, that one's already got a nice black backing on it. So, number one. So, Sibylla, you want to tell us about that piece? Well, this was a, a we had a photographer taking family photos, and this was one of those. And Alex chose to put on a mask, and he's sitting on his father's lap. So, yeah, when I first saw it, I thought it was that actually the shape of the head it looked like Alex to me, but they're related. Yeah. So, and then Alex had pulled off the clown mask, but it's actually Alex as a little boy wearing the mask and your right. dad's, his dad's right. holding it, right? Yeah. yeah, really cool. And of course you see that technique, which is kind of insane. You saw it, right? When I zoomed in? Yeah, when you zoomed in, yeah, which is, this is Alex's method, which has been described by some as masochism. <laughs> Did he have a masochistic streak? I don't, I don't know that. <laughs> Why do they call, why did they say that? Why did well, they... because it's torture. It's kind of self, it's torturous. Yeah, but I mean, it's his genius that he was able to do that. Yeah, exactly. Meditative, maybe. I mean, to be able to, to take a, a painting a part like that. Right. And, and come up with a, a, an image like this. I mean, to me, it's just genius. Yeah. This he could do that. You'd focus. He was also a hardcore uh, guitarist, musician, yeah. which is sort of the antithesis in a way, <laughs> isn't it? If you think of, I don't know, no, kind of wild lack of control. No, not really. No. I mean, you still got to play your the, notes. My father played the lute and, and composed music and right. was a scientist. Right, right, right. So, I mean, that's family tradition. I mean, that's not Music. Yeah, well, not music, anything. but we're talking about hardcore. But which still is music. sort of <laughs> <laughs> contemporary music contemporary music yeah that's what we'll call but it I, mean, I just I, mean, I look at these paintings up close and it's just amazing to me that he could do that yeah and this is one among 
uh, you know, say thousands of drawings and he never loses patience. No. Uh -uh. Yeah. Well, as you said, David, it's very meditative, probably as a process. It was yeah. for him. Yeah. And um, I, I spoke to Hugo, who's his nephew, who actually sort of studied with Alex for a, a summer and learning the techniques and kind of even in his own work now, because he went to yeah. RISD, he has some similarities, right? But um, I asked Lou, you know, if he mixed all his colors in advance and then filled in, but no. He would approximate throughout, always mixing the colors. And somehow, and not in this drawing necessarily, but in the larger paintings, and, and keep the balance throughout. Which Yeah, it's, it looks clearly like that to me. I never thought that it would mix the colors in advance. No. Okay. No. <laughs> Are you ready to put that in a portfolio? Yeah. Uh, yeah. While you were talking, I was holding it. There you go. So, the, so we, don't, we don't have to tape those in there or anything? They sit in OK? That one's all right, right? Okay. All right, number two. Yeah, I think I wouldn't take them. Yeah. Would you? No. No. Only if necessary. I mean, uh, maybe. Okay. They're not uh, going to flop around. OK. Number two is the girl, Lou. Maybe at the end. Which one do you want now? The girl. The, girl. the one that's uh, a model right. for the angel. So and again, the, with the doubling and the, in the show, um, the girl who we're calling the angel is a painting that hangs on the wall that's going to hang over the shelf. But then um, there's also a drawing of that same <laughs> same subject on paper. By the way, the wall text is going to be ready too. Uh, Will I talk to them at? The Chroma Center, which I'll plug the Chroma Center, which uh, is in Gowanus. There it is. Look at that. That's a beautiful one. Right. So again, everything's broken down. That's all broken down into horizontal and vertical lines, right, Lou? Yeah, exactly. Like so small tiles. Yes. So each uh, block then gets more or less lines depending on the tone. Uh -huh. So yeah, she goes number two. The Chroma Center is in Guanas and they do UV printing. If uh, you know what UV printing is, but it pr they print on dimensions. So I had them print a couple books for me on the covers, oh, nice. but they can print up to, I think four inches deep. Good thing for artists to know. All right, so that looks good. It looks good. We need to uh, probably use some scotch tape. Something. In a second moment. Okay, um, next one. The, the purple piece that you just took out. Yeah, that one. All right, Sibylla. Sibylla Brown, everyone. Thank you. Okay, this one doesn't have a title. Oh yeah, that's another thing. Um, if you can give me the titles, because I got to do the checklist. Perfect. So, so yeah. So you want to yeah, look how close. Look at that. That one's this one's a it's more of a squiggly line technique, you might call it, right, Lou? Like the lines. Is it purple water? Sorry, David. Water color, it says. That's what the materials are. Description. Okay, good. Good, good. Okay. So this is yeah, not only does Alex use head fakes for his titling. He also usually doesn't title, period, especially in the drawings. And we'll write on the back the date, uh, the date, his name, and the material, not necessarily the title. So this one says watercolor on the back, right? Correct. Yeah. So that one's untitled, unless we're going to title it watercolor. Did, did the other two have anything written on the back, title-wise? The one's called Girl, I think, right? So yeah, I'll have to get the um, yeah get the uh, date on that too. Are they done with a brush? Hey Andrew, thanks for your question. Are they done with a brush? Are you talking to us, David? What? Yeah. What? Looking at the piece. 
Um, the watercolor one, yes, would be done with the brush. That's what we were trying to figure out, unless there's some sort of watercolor pen. Has anybody ever heard of that? Because it looks like a pen. Yeah, because the lines are really consistent. Yeah. It looks like a pen. It was something we were discussing. Uh, Douglas Ross, who may come in later, knows Alex's um, techniques better than I do. But Lou, that one, does that look like it's done with a brush? Or is that one pencil? Pen, with a pen. Pen, okay. Yes. But not a, not a ballpoint, necessarily. Ink, ink pen. Ink some kind of, ink, okay. Which one is the next? Um, you got the purple one, uh, the, the Twin Towers. Again, playing on this twinning thing, which you'll see the Twin Towers are even, they're doubled. So it's like quadruple towers, which was done, what, and somebody year on that, which is done way after 2001. Hey, thanks everybody for joining. I really appreciate it. I know it's not exactly high drama here, but, um, oh yeah, look at that. I love it. The colors are two of my favorite color uh, combinations. So that one's ink blue. Uh, it says watercolor on the back. Yeah, we got to figure out that watercolor business. Well, you know, I've seen pictures of Alex sitting there at his table with a little tiny brush and some watercolors. So um, Twin Towers watercolor. 2018. 2018, thank you. So the next after that is uh, Lou, out of the, um, oh, you're still working there, okay. So we bought that portfolio at Blick in Iowa City because you gotta drive to Iowa City to get to the art store. Not only an hour and a half, but about $50 in gas. Um, okay, which one next? The next after is the, from the, um, the drawings that came with the painting, the double girl. It's a real simple line drawing from when he was very young. But uh, we like, again, this, the twinning doubling. He was also at that time doing paintings of uh, Rorschach tests. This one, David? Uh, I can't really see it, but yes, I think so. Yeah, that one. Mm -hmm. Yeah, perfect. This is hard to see, I guess, through the no, screen. No, no, no. Yeah, perfect. So, you know, frankly, I'm not sure if that's a model for something, if it was used for one of his transparencies or if it's, it doesn't have anything written on the back, right, Luke? No, nothing. Right. So. Um, we're not even sure necessarily if he considered that a finished work, but we're, we're mixing in some ephemera, let's say, very slight few things um, into the show. One, originally, it was to see how the ephemera functions differently than the paintings in terms of remembrance uh, with this idea of presence chamber. Because um, paintings function different than relics, at least in my opinion, because they have their own kind of inherent uh, meaning, as opposed to a meaning that's only historical. Um, yeah, good. And then there's um, what I called like a landscape wash, Lou, that was in the original group. That's a, a kind of a, a brown green kind of abstraction. Oh. Extremely beautiful. Yeah, that one. Uh huh. Uh huh. I think that one's gonna have to go. 
it's going to, I think it's supposed to be horizontal, but people will just have to look at it that way. Hey, Will, I, oh, yeah. yeah, perfect. I can't remember, were, um, were Sunny and Yu Yen coming today or tomorrow to get the keys? Tomorrow. No, okay. Well then, excuse us. Was there a car in the uh, gallery? <laughs> Did you hear that horn? A lot of things have changed since you've been gone, David. Oh, I see. You got a car parked in there now. I got it. <laughs> it moves. Uh, um, all right, we're moving along. This is great. So this painting, Presence Chamber, that the show's titled after, I, I sought out. It's been bought and sold a couple of times. It was in a collection in Puerto Rico and up until 2015, and then it was sold on Paddle 8, which since has gone out of business. Uh, and then the, uh, the collector that sold it in 2015 didn't know who it had sold to. Um, so I, I couldn't track it down for the show, which in the end, I think, uh, play to our advantage because it's absent and uh, the show has a lot to do with presence and absence. Yes, this is the color key for tapestry. This is the color key for tapestry. Thanks, Isabel. Um, which is the painting that we just hung. So uh, a key would be made like this to in advance of the painting in order to just um, to, to, to set the tones. Right. So this was on. This is actually now. It's in the. It was on the wall when Alex passed away, and uh, they use it in the for the, the foundation. A photo of that color key on the wall next to Alex's chair. Yeah, there's the painting. So let's see. So interesting. So it's not necessarily a because uh, that center line is a lot thicker. Yeah. So it's just a matter of trying to find the right values. Although it looks like they're a lot deeper in the painting. Uh, the study. So that's good. Um, that's good timing because the next picture that we're going to put in. Uh, I can't. I can't remember what I wrote for number seven. The key transport. Key transport. Oh yeah, yeah. No, exactly. So yeah, Will, so yeah. there's, the, this is good. We've got tapestry here, the, this color key, but there's the, um, the, the abstraction, the, the mask. Do you see that with the circles? Yeah. So we want to put that in, a, in one of the clear pages, um, but without the black on the back so you can see through it. Cool, right. So then, and then the, the, the one after that is the, the tapestry from the magazine. Yeah, so there's a good example of, so. I don't know what much, oh yeah. You oh yeah, we can see that. So Alex would lay this over top of, he would, well, first of all, every painting had a different pattern uh, that was specific to it. Uh, but this one, I'm pretty sure is the one that was used for tapestry. But anyway, we found it in Sibylla's basement here, along with the, it looks like a magazine page uh, of, the, um, of the carpet that's used for the painting tapestry that's in the show. So in our portfolio there, we're gonna have the transparency on a separate page, and then the next page will be tapestry so that you can see how it overlays. So reveals a little bit like the tricks of the trade, which may be, I hope Alex would be okay with, um, but I feel like since um, we're thinking about the show in terms of masks, that to show the way that the mask functions in relation to the the realism, uh, it, it's it seemed interesting to me, especially in the portfolio, uh, in this kind of series as it opens and closes. So yeah, look, it's so cool. So there's tapestry, which is a the like reflection, a unfortunately. So. Can you see? 
Yeah. Yeah, we can see that with the overlay of the um, pattern. Yeah, I'm still reflected in. Yeah. Cool. So that, can you tell us that um, from a magazine, the uh, that photo of the carpet? It looks like it, right? But it's a full page. No, I don't. Um, oh, got you. So it's a, um, oh my God, my phone is dying. It's a photocopy. Okay. Hey, they're not supposed to go in the same page together. So um, the, the transparency be on one page without the no, black. They are. they are. They're on separate pages. They're on separate pages. Okay. Got you. Cool. Thank we're you. Just... So Lou's phone's dying. That means yeah. uh, we lose our connection to New York. Oh, you got a, uh, did you bring your plug, Lou? Yes, of course. That was very good. Of course she did. She never, thinks, never forgets anything. Lily, you like being half in the picture. You're not going to cover the painting. I don't want to cover the painting. I want the painting in the background. <laughs> it's Bill Brown. Okay. All right. Okay. Cool. So almost. Which one do you want next? We still have one page. We only have one page? Yeah. No, nah, there's more pages than that. Do we take the extra pages out? I don't know, David. That's what I we have. Man, there's more pages at home, probably. Okay, so what do you want next? The girl sitting. Twenty pages. Yeah, that one. <laughs> Thank you. Lovely. What's behind her, do you think? A mirror. That's what I thought. That's what we want. That's not the mirror girl though, by the way. There's there's another one coming up. Cool. So So you're telling me there aren't any more pages. That's not even 10 pages. Anyway, they must, there must be some more pages at home. If you want, we can argue over the phone, but. <laughs> Unless I left them here. Okay, so what goes next? All right, well, there's, there's gonna be three more in there, but we'll deal with that. We'll figure out where those pages are. Um, the next is is uh, is to put down the um, well. Let's go over to the shelf. Is your phone plugged in now? We can't move. Yeah, exactly. No, let the we, we can move. We can move. We can move. Okay, so we got the shelf here, which is um, around the corner from the entrance. Okay. And uh, look at that! Somehow magically appeared there on its own. Uh, so I put that in before I before I left. And uh, the portfolio is going to sit on top of that. So maybe we should put it on there and see what it looks like, just size wise, because I'm not really sure how big that thing is. Don't, don't we place the glass first? Yeah, yeah, but the glass isn't there yet, is it? Yes, it's here. 
Oh, Yaka got it already. Yes. Uh -huh. Yeah. Well, yeah, let's put that glass on there. Or it's plexi, just so you know. Yeah. David, are drawings going underneath the glass? Yeah, that one drawing of the girl uh, in front of a mirror that's doubled. That big one. Okay. That's what goes down. And then there's those little plastic feet that go around it to, um, to cover. <laughs> you know, the thing is, we got another hour and we're going to run out of things to do. We're just going to have to chat. Because people said they're going to show up uh, later, you know, like at one o'clock. Where would you like the, the drawing? Right in the middle, I think. Well, that's a good question. I'm not sure. I think to the left, like you had it, maybe. There's, there's also, Lou, a note from... Um, yes. Right? Beautiful, can you read that? Hi, Alex. Welcome back to your other home. It was good to finally meet. I enjoy your complexity. I like, and I like how it shows in your paintings. Here's some music to enjoy, Hudson, from the Feature Gallery. 1997, very likely. 97, when they first met. Um, so anyway, that was downstairs in the in the archive. Does that fit on there with it? Yeah. Yes. Would so, you yeah. Like to, Perfect. Would, you, would you like to keep the post that says 1997 question mark? Yes, 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 yes. That's great. Do you think it looks better at the top or the bottom? On the side. I mean, at the top of the shelf or on the lower part of the shelf? I think it should be on the lower part. Yeah, like that. Okay. Yeah. Woo, that's nice. Mm -hmm. Very cool. And we what is the portfolio going to be, David? It's going to go right on top once we get the glass on there. I see. We didn't get to see the girl in the mirror. Yes. So this is, um, I actually have, oh, I forgot to give it back to you. I have this hung in the apartment now, the original of oh, the girl okay. looking in the mirror. Yeah. I just have it taped to the wall, but um, you can see that, it's, well, she's looking in a mirror and it's doubled, but then the, the technique is also doubled too, because it's both red and li almost like um, 3D glasses and it's slightly shifted. So there's a, uh, I guess a triple doubling, which is really fascinating and great. To me, uh, this is like table tapping practically for um, speaking to the ancestors. So yeah, that's really great. That's, a, that's an amazing one. So Lou, does it have a title on the back? He says uh, Mirror 2018. Great. No materials. Ink. Ink. Man, that's great. So right. And then the letter from Hudson's over there on the right, right? And mm -hmm. really nice. <clears throat> Lou, we also have uh, a photograph of the yeah. cat. I think since there's room, let's put that under there too, above Hudson's letter. I was originally thinking to hang that on the wall, but I think it's better if it fits there. Okay. So we have a reproduction of the captain. So that's doubled in the show. You have real painting and then a small, very 
casual snapshot of it in the studio, um, which also maybe draws out this odd effect of Alex's work in reproduction. Okay, David, we're going to place the glass, okay? Did you find the did you find the photo? Let me see. Oh yeah, you got it there. Okay, great. Wow, that's great. Did you put the little balls on there? The little feet? Yes. Yeah. Does um does that seem good? There's enough room for the drawing and everything underneath? Looks great. And does it slide around at all? No. Perfect. Hey, Douglas. Hey, Douglas, thanks for joining. You're here just in time for the Plexi shelf installation, which is looking really good. So it's got um, drawing or work on paper, ink on paper, uh, mirror, small, photo uh, can we zoom in on the small photo of uh, no we can't get any closer of the captain which is the painting that's on the main wall again doubled and how about that um yeah Thanks. Yeah. Sorry for all the reflections, but it's inevitable. No, that's part of what we want. It's because it's like a mirror, you know? No, but, but not in person. There are no reflections in person. It's because of the light above. OK? Um, oh, wait, can I see? I wasn't paying attention. Can I see um, the captain in the photograph? Yeah. So there's the captain, which is the painting that's in the main space, uh, but shot in the studio. Looks great. And then Hudson's letter just below, which we think is potentially, since it's 97, um, one of their first communications together. And they're already exchanging uh, notes about music, which obviously Alex has a huge record collection of music and is as into music as he was art, really. Um, there it is. That's so nice. Hudson from Feature Gallery passed away in 2014. Great gallery. It's one of the best. Okay. Okay. That is looking really good. So let's see what it looks like now with the portfolio on there. If it's really disruptive and troubling. All right? done. I'm sorry, but I have to put back the font. That's all right, Lou. We're all just hanging out. I'm amazed it's going so well. The only thing is where those pages are. That's really, I don't get it. Maybe I left them here. Because I, you know, when we set it up in when we were in Iowa, Lou, I, I took out pages, I guess, because we only had 10 drawings in there, but now we've got more than 10 drawings. So the pages might be somewhere else, but I'm sure we can get more pages at Lick, everyone's favorite art store. Yeah.
Hey, what happened? Oh, what? <laughs> she disappeared. I think her phone. I think her phone unplugged. Hey, New York. Uh, there we are. Thanks, Lou. Welcome back. Can you hear me? I can hear you, sweetie. Can you see? I can't see, though. Exactly. Hold on. I just asked you to start the video. I think that'll make it clear. There you are. OK. Upside down, though. <laughs> Don't know why. Hold on. <laughs> And why am I upside down? You look good that way. Uh, where are we now? Oh, we're about to put the portfolio in there. And then we got to hang up the angel. Sibylla. Okay. So, David, the portfolio is obviously larger than, uh, than the little table. Is it? No, I didn't know that was obvious. Uh, I'm uh, curious to see what it looks like. I think that's okay. Okay. Yeah. I mean, it, it should, when people come in, it should be closed. So, it, 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 yeah. And then and then you know you open it and you see what's underneath. And what about um Yeah, it could sit like that. Yeah. Right. Yeah, that's fine. Yeah. But I like that it's kind of hidden and then it's revealed. That's cool. Yeah, nice. Yeah. Okay. Great. Um, and then, um, then the angel. And uh, well, we already spoke about this, but you know, so her gaze is is uh, confronting the, the viewer as they come around the corner. And so, yeah, it, it, the gaze is probably more important than the relationship to the shelf, but we want to make that good too, you know. There it is. Will's an angel too. Something. So Lou, what do you think? I was thinking closer to the shelf. Yeah. Does she, is she looking right at you, Lou? Yeah, but I wouldn't go that close to the shelf. Why not? I was even thinking- Because, because I like it better here, where uh, Will is holding it. I was even thinking over the shelf at some point. I mean, no, I, no, I, I love the proximity to the shelf. Like in some, you know, tension with the shelf. Well, David, whatever you like. Well, is she looking at you? She always looks at you. <laughs> Wherever she's you looking, she's looking at me too. <laughs> <laughs> oh, he got that Mona Lisa effect. Right. No, I think it should be closer to the shelf where Will had it a minute ago. Yeah, like split the difference between the door and the shelf, at least, if not closer to the shelf. Yeah. Split like the difference is there. Oh, is it? See, it's yeah. different here. It looks different here. I don't know. I still like it closer to the shelf. So then I can cheat it to the shelf. Though, cheat it to the shelf for sure. Yeah. Okay. And then height wise? No, it should be closer to the shelf. Closer. He, he wants it even closer. Yeah. No, that's too close. That's too close. Yeah, like right there, right there. If, okay. if, if her gaze is working. Yeah. I don't. I don't like it. I like it better where it was, and 
uh, but okay, sure. You want it like that? And then about, you want eye level to be eye level, right? Not your eye level, though, but everybody else. No, no, no. no not yeah, I think, yeah, the center line doesn't matter. Yeah, just whatever feel, not, it doesn't have to be in relation to uh, the other paintings. Yeah, so just uh, her eye level, eye level. Yeah, use Yanka's eyes as a guide. Yeah. Average height, yeah. Yeah, so like right It's almost lunchtime. Um, oh, I want to see the cards too that came, right? So we got cards for the show, postcards. Oh, good. I always like to make postcards for the show, good. even though. Terrific. Um, and nice. you carry them around with you, four by six inches. Sure. And this one has something new. Which we'll show you in a sec that I haven't done before, but I, it 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 looks great, and I think it actually even oddly relates to the painting, as it should, because it's for Alex to show. Steve didn't come. He was um, he had a meeting or something. No, he's a lawyer. Lawyers. Yes. Always busy. Well, he's actually working for he's not in private practice anymore. Oh, he did he have his own practice for a while? He was in a uh, you know, part of a group. Uh, yeah, he works for that big uh, corporation now, the construction company, right? I'm, I'm not really sure. They got a nice building downtown. So David is taking a break. Yeah. Where did he go? Pardon? Much coffee. It is lunch time. Anybody uh, want to say hi? They're busy. Everybody's like, it's just like a wall of names.
but Deborah Ross is an old, old friend of Alex. Yes, I know, Douglas Ross. Want to say hi, Douglas? Isn't he the one who introduced can, him to Hudson? Is that true, Douglas? Did you introduce Alex to Hudson? I don't know. He's on the board, too. Oh, Patrick? Okay. Oh. What do you think? Looks nice. <laughs> All right. Good. Yeah? Yes. Yeah, I think so. That is so nice. She's even facing the right direction because she's her body's turned towards the portfolio, right? Yes. That's great. That is great. She's like, I feel like, you know, she's like um, watching over the presence in the presence chamber. So, you know, the only thing left is the name on the wall, which is, uh, they haven't printed yet. It's down the street. So um, I did, I don't, I haven't, I don't normally do that, but for this show in the entrance way, there's gonna be a light gray text that says uh, Alex Brown presence chamber. So there's a- uh, Okay. Bible. You know, David, Will is suggesting um, to type uh, on the wall where, to mark on the wall where you want the text. Yeah, okay, good. Since, since we have you here. Yeah, yeah, no, that's great. Thanks, Will. So um, way down- so Maybe Sibylla also wants to see the layout of the gallery. So she has a sense of uh, how the exhibition looks like. Oh, definitely. Are you still plugged into the wall or can you walk around freely? Uh, so, um, Let's take care of the wall at the entrance and mark where you want the yeah, that'd be you want Alex name. And then uh, in the meantime, the phone charges a little bit more and then I walk around before saying goodbye, okay? Okay, sounds good. So, uh, so let's move to boxes. Where are those pages? That's what I'm saying. I don't know. I have enough trouble remembering what my stuff is. <laughs> they can't be in the apartment yet. <laughs> so, way down there, Will. Yeah. I think yeah. That and, and it looks good in relation to the light, right? Because I did sort of set the lights up with that in mind. So, yeah. So I would say, like, in that kind of hot spot right there. Hey, Lou, your phone is um, sideways again if, if it's easy to fix. Oh, somebody say something in the chat. How long is the text going to be, David? David? Uh, it's it's on an eight by ten sheet. Oh, okay. So I'm seeing here in the chat that uh, eight by ten horizontal. Yeah, eight by ten horizontal. Yep. So uh, Alex Ross introduced. Uh, I think so. To Hudson. I think so. And then Alex Ross, I think, showed paintings there too. Yeah, he right? did. That's yeah. how. Yeah, that's how he knew us. That's how he knew Hudson. That was related. Yeah. Thanks, Douglas, for that response. That's what I would have to confirm it with him. 
Yeah. No, he's he, Douglas is the one who told me. He just told me in the text. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah, something like that. Yeah, yeah, that looks great. And it should be a nice light gray and, you know. Okay. So Lou, you wanna, um, you wanna I'm, go I'm outside and look up the steps so Sibylla can see where we are in Brooklyn? Is that? Yes. Yeah, okay. So I'll show you, come in from the street. Yeah, thanks for your kind message. Okay. Yeah, thank you. Okay, Bianca brings away the tripod. Right, okay, so this is... Okay. Okay, so this is the entrance of the gallery. Yeah. It's yeah. a wheel marking Alex Brown, writing Alex Brown on the wall. Yeah, just so you don't forget. Oh, wow. Why did I go to the printed? We should just do it like that. Yeah. September. Yes. Yeah. You're going to have to erase that, you know. Yeah, actually, I still have to touch up this wall. Okay. I mean, I'm just saying because it's not on a sheet of paper. It's like... What the heck do you write? Five, two, four. Perfect. What does it say, Lou? He says, uh, oh, okay. <laughs> okay. So, so yeah. We walk through. Oh, you don't uh, want to go down to the street. Corridor, you see, there is a corridor. And Lou, then, you don't want to go down to the street. Huh? You don't want to go down to the street. No, Daddy, no. <laughs> okay. Here we approach the painting. See the girl. It's the and table. That's great. There and then that is where the space opens up in, in its 22 feet high. And then the cap. It's the tapestry and the captain. So I like the captain's like frontal address, you know. The 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 thing with presence chamber and the title was originally there was gonna be just one painting, and then the painting hangs there, you come around the corner, and the painting becomes a stand-in for the artist if there's only one. So that was the original thinking, but then in looking at the archive here, um, if it were just the captain, then it's not the painting that becomes a stand-in for the artist, it's becomes, the captain becomes a stand-in for the artist. And, and I didn't really want there just to be one painting and there it is and the captain's supposed to be Alex or something. But also David, when I was there with you in Iowa and we visited, um, um, the wasn't I don't think it was Alex's studio in the basement of the house. Um, we also saw the materials and tools that he used for his work, like uh, this uh, yeah ruler and um, this scale proportional scale. So if I remember well, you said that it would have been nice to turn the galleries almost uh, into Alex's studio. Um, so when people come here, they, they, they experience this work through the drawings, the painting, and through the friends that are going to be here while you are in Iowa. And they talk about Alex's work and maybe Alex a little bit also. So it's like the space is, becomes uh, lively, no? An alive space uh, with, with things that he used and uh, made obviously so it's almost like a, not a studio but it's it's more than a, you know it's, it's more it's warmer than simply a gallery where you hang up a painting you know i remember this week that we talked about it when we were there and then we we're going to try to get the chair alex's famous uh, studio chair there but anyway that all started to like to seem yeah trying to recreate the studio seemed like a little much 
but I, I, you know, we were thinking about putting in some of those tools, Lou, on that shelf, but I don't think it needs it. What do you think? Okay, good. I, I don't think so. What do you think? I don't think. No, I don't think it needs that. I just wanted to say that that was one of the reasons why you decided to have two paintings also versus one and many drawings versus just one painting because, yeah, uh, you know, and it's, then, there are different uh, approaches to, to the work and uh, you're trying to, to cover them all. I mean, yeah, to open the conversation uh, more than what would happen just through one painting. Yeah, definitely. There was more of a narrative that could be created. Exactly. And, yeah. and, and I, I do think that then the captain being a singular figure does stand in for the artist, but you have tapestry there too, which kind of softens that blow. You know, if it was just this one painting with this one character, it would be too much like it's supposed to be Alex standing there. And that, that seemed, you know, not full enough of an, uh, of an approximation of the artist's relationship to the object. So the, uh, and then the abstraction on the left, I thought as far as content goes, in this relationship between realism and abstraction <laughs> that it it drew out that relationship nicely like if that was another painting of another figure on the left then things would definitely feel off kilter to me but having a single figure and then an abstraction seemed uh like we could still evoke a presence mm -hmm. you know? um okay Yeah. Um, what else? I think we are ready to open the show almost. <laughs> uh, Sibylla, any, anything to say? No, looks good to me. Uh, it looks really good, David. Yeah. Sibylla, yes, very good. I wish, uh, I wish uh, Sibylla, you could come over and see it in person. <coughs> Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> I don't travel anymore. Yeah. I hate it. Yeah. Uh, Christopher says he's going to try to come at the end of the show, so that'll be good. Um, Okay. Mark, thanks for coming. Uh, I, I feel like there was something. Huh. No, let me check my notes. But I, I did say that we were going to Zoom until 2. I don't know if I need to stay on just for that reason. But uh, if, anybody, if anybody out there would like to say anything, we certainly have time for it. I'm going to have to get at some point a more complete list of the drawings, uh, and the titles and the dates and stuff, because I have to. Yeah, you, sure, your assistant is going to do it. Yeah. And Can I ask a question. Yeah, please. What the, the work on the on, that I'm seeing on my left here, the striations, the stripes. Yeah. When was that piece done? I don't remember him doing those pieces. That's that's what we're saying. That's we think his last painting. Oh. From 2018. Wow. Yeah, and it was a, a new direction. Yeah. It's a, called Tapestry. So I love I would it. Say judging from the reproduction, which we have there in the, sh in the portfolio, mm -hmm. it's more of a carpet, but he kind of, yeah, yeah. Kind of called it Tapestry, giving you a little bit more, I guess, presence. But um, <laughs> uh, yeah, so it's in a, he laid over the abstract grid on what was already an, an abstract shun, which is this horizontal stripes. But the carpet has um, some uh, uh, rips in it or, or it's worn in places. So you can see that the, like down on the bottom there, you can yeah. see. Um, and in that it comes to life in that way because that's when it starts to look like a carpet again instead of just stripes. Hmm. Is it painted in his uh, signature uh, tiled effect? 
or not? Or is it more loosely? It's hard to see is why I'm asking. No, it is. There we go. Oh, I love it. Excellent. Oh, yeah. Amazing. Okay. Yeah. And somehow this is the magic of these pieces is somehow when he breaks that grid with the um, with slight tonal shifts uh, from a distance, you can see that the carpet's being represented and it is has some deformations in it. Wow. Uh, when the pattern slightly shifts so and really from behind that abstraction you start to feel this real presence of the carpet yeah well it's also interesting the way he sort of dispensed with the photograph as it were you know with the subject the content of the photograph and it's just kind of a He's getting down, he's boiling it down to just the essentials of what his painting is about, which is the tiling and, um, you know, the thing, as it were, but not necessarily the, you know, the, the illusionistic properties of a photograph. Well, it is, it is a layover of, um, of a photograph. Of a I know it's a photo of a carpet. Right. But I'm just saying, you know, without figurative, it's more like down to the thing and the nuances and the um, of the thing itself rather than of the content of a photograph. Right. And thing. interesting, I find out in talking to Christopher, who's uh, Alex's brother, that Sibylla is a weaver. Isn't be. that true, Sibylla? I used to be. Yep. So there would have been looms around the house when Alex was painting. Yeah, I had a big, yeah. big four harness loom. So I, as far as Alex's technique goes, just generally speaking, it is like weaving in this kind of. That's an interesting point, isn't it? Right. Because that. there's these kind of breaks down into like mm -hmm. uh, units of color. Right. And then the last painting's tapestry, which it's really I nice. think is beautiful in it that regard. Beautiful. Yeah. It's very, very interesting and wonderful. I'm talking to Mark, right? Yes, I am Mark. Hi. Hi Mark. Thanks for coming. Oh yeah, thank you for Where, including where are you? Are you in New York? Or? I'm in upstate. I'm upstate New York. And, and you knew Alex as a, as a friend, huh? Yes, he was a friend and we knew each other for many, since the eighties, I guess. Since uh -huh. the eighties uh, and we became Pretty good friends. Hi, Doug. Hi, Mark. Great to see you. <laughs> you too. I didn't know what happened to you, where you are. or I'm in Queens. Yeah. yeah, I'm in Queens. And I told David that he had to get in touch with you for sure. Okay. Yeah. Thanks a lot for including me. Yeah. I like it. I have, I, have, um, I have one of Alex's paintings in my bedroom. So I see it every day. Oh, really? I, what's, yeah. What's the title? I have Motel. Motel? Yeah, it's it was in his first show at Feature, I guess. Uh, or maybe it was his, yeah, I think it was his first show at Fe Feature. It's- a Motel room, like an interior? It's, yeah, it's called Motel, it's the interior. It's pretty abstract. There's, um, you don't really know quite what it is, but he told me. It was a carrier pigeon convention and a guy had a cage of carrier pigeons inside of a motel room. You, yeah. A tough one to probably deduce from looking at, I guess. Uh, it, it's it, hard to see the pigeons. Position there. <laughs> it's pretty great. I love it and I've had it for a long time. And I love it, I still love it. I was just saying that I like your books behind you, Douglas, because it looks like you consumed all the ones. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> After you read them, they go to the other side, right? Yeah. Right. <laughs> uh, oh, look at that. Excellent. So that that's the painting. Well, that drawing we found here in the house on the stairwell here at Sibylla's. And um, yeah, that was kind of the uh, one where it allowed me to start thinking of the show um, in relation to, well, masks and the way that Alex used masks in his um, 
with these overlays. And then thinking not necessarily the overlay ultimately is the mask, but once it's fused with the realism, the painting itself is the mask. Mm -hmm. Nice, Lou, thanks. Yeah, amazing. Wow. I'm a granite. So this is not signed and it's a very early piece. Douglas, does this look familiar to you at all? Uh, yeah, I have some tracing paper. He sent he sent me some tracings of this exact thing I have I have <laughs> where that I suppose he was using to make transfers onto canvases or something. Yeah. Yeah, I recognize this. Actually, the tracings that I have, she her elbows become airplane, they become like a airplane landing gear. <laughs> that's funny anyway yeah so that's a really early like thing. mashing up two motifs that were common for alex uh, aircraft and right yeah <laughs> anyway but that piece man, must be from early 90s or something that, that i think it's me. around probably around 95 yeah okay oh wow you know lou in this one again the effect i can see the uh, ship much better than when i when we look at it in Actually, no, it would have been around 96 because um, that's when he uh, left New York and started sending a lot of letters. So, Oh, so he mailed those transparencies to you? Yeah. I see. Um, Mark, since you, since you put on your video, I just thought I'd, I'd pin you so we can see you. Okay. <laughs> so you're in your studio, it looks like there. I am. Yeah. Yeah. I'm working on some paintings right now. So did you and Alex show together? No, we were just, um, how, uh, we never show together, no. We just became friends. He had a studio um, with my wife at the time on Lafayette next to the public theater. Do you remember that studio, Doug? I was there, we were studio mates there. You were in that studio too? Yeah. Oh, yeah, to, to begin. That's right. Okay. Just for like a year and a half at the beginning. Right. Yeah. yeah. So that's where we met and we just remained friends. Um, and, uh, you know, whatever. Yeah. yeah. Hanging out in downtown. and um, But no, we never showed together. Right. Well, well, judging from your paintings in the background, it wouldn't be a bad show. That's a <laughs> well, that's, thank you. That is <laughs> flattering i take that as a compliment now they're far away there but yeah yeah they're far away no but maybe they would who knows <laughs> so there was some similar there was some overlap in interest as far as painting and art goes maybe or not yeah. you know there was just a um a what's the word as you know as a sympathy uh we connected and you know i liked him i think he liked me uh <laughs> but yeah I was just, generally interested in what he was doing. Um, <laughs> you know, I was good friends with his small little coterie of artists, you know, Alex Ross and Sally Ross and, uh, you know, people like that. The villager said you would know if he didn't like you. Oh, oh good, thank you, okay. <laughs> yeah, that's probably true. I, I heard that about him actually. Yeah, some, some yeah. Some of his friends mentioned that to me. That I never felt that myself either. So I guess. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So who knew, right? <laughs> right. Cool. Cool. Um, well, other than those missing pages, I think we're in good shape. Uh, so this show will be. Oh, yeah. I should say that. <laughs> yeah, please. The show opens tomorrow okay. at noon. And then Mark, what um, the sort of, because I'm in, as you can see, Iowa or Des Moines, or that's where I'm Oh, from, right. With Sibylla's place here. And since I'm in Iowa as one of the artist residents at the Alex Brown Foundation, which has a, a, a residency program, maybe, or maybe you didn't know. I heard, yes. So um, I proposed to the foundation with this show in mind and that I would come here 
and work in Alex's studio while his work hung in my gallery as a kind of studio, or I, I mean, that is one reason why the show is called Presence Chambers, because there's a kind of presence and absence, notion of presence and absence, and how the work functions as, as a kind of an extension of self in post-mortem even. So the fact that I'm absent is kind of a part of it, at least at the beginning of the show. And then friends of his, which you can get involved with this if you want, are um, gonna sit in the gallery while I'm gone. So tomorrow, uh, Kate Schmitz is gonna be there at noon, and uh, Where's, where is the gallery? It's in Brooklyn, in Carroll Gardens. Okay. What's what's the name of the gallery? Your name? Yeah, Cat House Proper. Okay. And uh, so it's open from twelve to six Friday through Sundays. So for those first two weekends, we'll have guests, friends of Alex, sitting with the work, and then uh, and then I'm back on the twelfth. Oh, oh, good. Look, Chris just showed up. Great. Chris, thank you. Hi, Hi. I'm gonna pin you. Where were I? I'm, I'm waiting for my grandmother to come. <laughs> yeah, there she is. Now she gets in the picture. She's getting excited now. Now I can see you. Now I can... I, um, I, I'm here with my daddy. <laughs> I yeah, we got flowers for mom. Yes, it's mom's. It's it's mom's birthday. Alex's sister-in-law's birthday. That's right. Happy. Did you wish her a happy birthday for me? Yeah, we will. She'll come in in a minute. She yeah. didn't want to go. Yeah, We're down here in Austin, where we've been dealing with uh, an ice storm, which the city is not yeah, doing. I, 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 with, so. yeah. I wondered if you had gotten if it it had reached Austin. I keep seeing pictures of Dallas with the car sliding on the road. It did. It, we, we, we had, we, we were lucky. We had kept our power. Yes. Okay. yes. You have, you're having an ice storm, Tammy? Yeah, I did. I, oh, I have these, these little Playmobil fairy. You have a Playmobil fairy? Yeah. Yeah. A so so Octavia, look here. You can see here. This is one of your uncle's paintings here. Yeah. See. Lost planet. Yeah. Oh, there's that there. Yeah. Oh, and you see the captain. The, the captain. Yeah. All right. I'm gonna. <laughs> you're all dressed up. You're all you for minutes. Yeah. Yes. This is normal around here. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Do you know your full name? Is it Alejandra, Octavia Alejandra? Yeah, Octavia Alejandra Rodriguez Brown. Yeah, so you partly named after your brother. Uh, yeah, sometimes. All right. Today, hey, Alma. I'm well, let's let her talk. There's a lot of other people on the call, so we're gonna we're gonna go. Oh, no, back. that's okay. We're we're actually we got the work up, uh, Chris. We're we're in chit chat mode now. Okay. Yeah. The work yes. is done. Yes, Tabby. What did what did you want to say? Um, um my, my name is um my man Daddy was my name. Alejandra. <laughs> oh <laughs> you show them some of these Alex Brown yeah. paintings that are in here. Yeah. Hey, hey, today my 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 father papa died. Oh that no that he died, he died three months ago. Mommy. Hello. Here's Hi. David Dixon, near Douglas Hello. Ross. And Happy Hattie. birthday. Thank Large you. Large piece, the cap hanging <laughs> here. Oh, wow. Oh, today's your birthday. Hey. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. How are Happy you? Happy birthday. Thanks. Hi. Good to see you. Oh, Hi, well, I'll see you there now, too. <laughs> All right. You want to see, well, here's our, I'll give you our gallery of, I'm going to show them some of this stuff real quick. This Good. is the, uh, very early, I guess, like Parsons era or right out of it. Yep. And this is a pretty groovy uh, drawing. Hold on a second, sweetie. Which I guess that's reason that that's of a kind of what he did a lot of these like family related pieces uh, in the last five years before he passed away. This is like just simple kind of black rapidograph on 
like watercolor paper or something. And then um, this is probably reflections are probably too bad to really see, but this is a very funny one. That's an inside joke between him and me. And say something. Yes, it's, I mean, <laughs> we found a photograph of when I broke my jaw uh, as a kid and they gave me a tracheotomy and Alex always wanted to, when the tracheotomy was, when the trach tube was removed, he kept trying to put, he had one of those super balls that looked like an eye <laughs> with things all over and he kept trying to stick it in the hole. Oh, great, man. <laughs> A very Alex Brown kind of an idea of what would be cool. Yeah, um, sure. <laughs> and and we found a photo when we were going through my dad's slides of me with my face all messed up and a smile and in my astronaut pajamas. And they had put a tag on me that said, of course, it was an accident. Would I do it this to myself on purpose? And I think that's what this says. It's oh, like right. a close up of a detail of this photo. Um, and then this is a, a pretty cool kind of early drawing. It's just like totally insane. I think he told me this was a continuous line. Oh, I'm wow. not sure how that's like really possible or whether that's in, and whether that's some kind of distortion of my memory, but. Um, oh, so that technique, cause he uses it in other places. Do you think that's true that it's one single line? Is that part of the, Douglas, do you know if that's true? I don't know. I don't know if it's true. I'm not sure. But he, he used that technique in other drawings, whatever that is, but That's I don't know if it's right, one yeah. line. Yeah. They're yeah. incredible. It, either way, they're amazing drawings. Yeah. yeah. Absolutely. Amazing. So well, sorry we joined a little on the late side. We've been running around trying to provision up to deal with the uh, ice oh, storm. But we just wanted to pop in briefly. And so um uh, so I want. I'm the, the captain looks pretty cool. I wonder what that is. Um, Look forward to seeing. Yeah, we got the captain, and then to the left is a tapestry. But uh, yeah. I don't know if you saw that yet. Well, I saw a tapestry. I mean, that was hanging in his. Okay. Yeah, there we go. Okay. Let me. Uh, that's great. Let me pin that. And. So yeah, so you know that's the space. It's uh, about twenty by twenty by twenty feet, almost a perfect cube, and we've got the cap and tapestry, which we think from Christopher that is probably the last painting or one of the last. And then in the entrance there, Christopher is a shelf. And as Hold on, yeah. What happened to the portfolio? But um. Oh, very cool. Yeah, and then there's under plexi there. There's the girl with the mirror. Oh, and, and there's a girl painting. Mm -hmm, and a girl painting. And there's a note from Hudson under the glass that uh, from 97, which we think might want, be one of their first like, communications. <clears throat> it's a Very slide. cool. It was nice to meet you kind of thing. Oh, OK. Super and, cool. Um, and there's a photo, a studio photo of the captain under there, too. Yeah. Right on. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Very nice. Well, yeah, there's a portfolio that sits on that. But OK. Awesome. Drawings. Awesome. Beautiful. Yeah, I've, I, I think that was in that Paris show, too, which we went to. There's the photo. OK. There's the. Uh, the clown <laughs> from the hallway that you were talking about or from the stairwell here. Yeah. And then the drawing for the girl. So there's some, there's one of the motifs is doubling, you know, and mirroring in the show. Mm -hmm. So we've got the girl in there twice. And there's another one of those continuous line drawings, if in fact that's what it is. And then another doubling the Twin Towers twice. I don't think we need that. Um, sticky in there that sticker that's cool i love that piece yeah david we still need to fix the drawings with scotch tape into uh, the phone and get, and get the list and get uh, the list so right. they are going to be nicely right. placed in the each one on on their sheets yeah 
Nice. Oh, so this is what I was telling you about, Christopher, where uh, we have the key or the, uh -huh. the, the overlay, which is on a transparent page, and then you turn the page, yeah. the tapestry um, reproduction, which there you can really see how the carpet is worn, the worn carpet. And then another uh, girl it, just been sitting in front of a mirror. And, um, and then we ran out of pages. In the portfolio, yeah. No, David, there are still there are still two pages. There are still two pages. Oh, good. Yeah, I'm sorry, I didn't see them before. Um, good. We want to put the um, well. If there's only two pages, we want to put the jackal in there, and then um, there's a maybe two jackals at the end. Because he did this jackal guy <laughs> multiple times, as uh, Christopher was telling me that he's a uh, Marxist uh, terrorist. His name was Carlos the Jackal. Carlos the Jackal, yeah, Venezuelan. Um, yeah. Looks great. Well, we'll look forward to trying to get up there here um, while it's up, and uh, we're gonna right. have to, we're gonna have to ring off and return to our survivalist mode here <laughs> you're going in the bunker okay yeah we're down here in the bunker but it's great to see y'all good to see you Alma. and uh happy birthday again to others. thank you thank you okay real quick real quick and then we're gonna say bye-bye bye-bye beautiful dress grandpa papa died today he died three months ago but that's okay Uncle. Your uncle died. Yeah, well, this is some of his work. That's what they're there to talk about. So we're going to go see it in New York. And, 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 and the dog died. That's right. All right. We'll see you all. Thank you so much. All right, Christopher. All right. Bye. Yeah. So, yeah, we want to get uh, two of those Carloses then at the end. And that'll, that'll be good. Yeah, two of those guys. <laughs> Carlos the Jackal. So we kept running into this Carlos when we were looking through all those drawings. And I mean, I didn't know who it was. I was like, who is this guy? Because Alex rarely did the same subject, you know, multiple yeah. times. But he, he did drawings of this guy. There's must be like five, five, 10 of them, I would yeah. think. Or something. So I liked having a uh, double of the same. Perfect. David, sorry, yes, yes, sorry. exactly. What about to put them next to each other, facing each other, like yeah, that? Yeah, I like them. Yeah, definitely. Okay. Yeah, cool. So we still have one page left, then. Yes. So let's yes. go. With the, let's go with blue mask. The blue mask, uh, right there next to you, Will. Yes. So we can do that, and then, and then we'll just switch them around, and. Um, yeah, put that one on the single page and put it before Carlos. So we'll, we'll end with the jackal. But I like that one as a kind of blue mask. Yeah. Again, that continuous line technique. David. Yes, Mark. How long will the show be up? Till March 19th. Great. Okay. And, uh, and we're going to have some kind of... Um, Closing reception. Okay, great. And there'll be like this, there'll be events throughout in different ways, I imagine. So, you know, I'll be in touch about that stuff. Okay, great. Did you say you changed the order? Thank you very much. I Unfortunately, I have to leave. No, Thank, you. Thank you. Thank so you much. very much. Okay. It's really great, really great to see the, the work and to talk to a few friends. Yeah, and this is in lieu of an opening in a sense. So, yeah. yeah. All right. Thank you, man. Bye. Thanks a lot. Hi, Mark. Great. See you. You. Bye, Doug. Yeah. Oh, well, maybe we should try to catch up. I love that. I'll find okay. you. Yeah. Okay. okay. Bye. Please. So, how does that go there at the end, Will? Yeah. Which is the last picture? You want this last? No. Carlo, the jacket. 
No, um, okay. Cool. Like that. Oh, I see what's up. I see what's up. Um, so can we make it so that it's a blue portrait? And then on the back of blue portrait is Carlo. Yeah, I exactly. knew. And then, yeah, yeah. So switch the girl yeah. and the, the blue portrait. Oh, yeah, yeah, either way. Yeah, 150. We did it. We even found the pages. All there's to do is to put that text on the wall. So, um, and that, when they get in touch with me, I'll just let you know. It's not like it's a minor thing. Okay. Yeah, I think so. Go ahead. Go through the last couple pages. Yeah, nice. Okay. Nice. Cool. Yeah, that does it. That's good. Well, well, well. Yeah, they need to be fixed. But yeah. It's the order. That's lovely. Thank yes. you, Sibylla. Hey, Sibylla, Douglas is saying something. Yeah, just, yeah. just thank you. Thank you. Thank that's you. all. Yeah. That, that's it. Thanks so much. <laughs> Looks good. Thank you, Will. Well, all right, everybody, I guess we can sign off, huh? Yes. Yeah? Yes. All right. Uh, like I say, the show opens tomorrow at noon. Yay. Yay. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, um, Will and Louisa. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Um, Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Bianca. Thank you. I really appreciate the work. All right. So, um, you know, we'll, we'll talk if we need to about other stuff. Yeah. Yeah. And the, yeah, very we'll good. Find you well, this is great. It really worked out. Whew, I'm yeah. relieved. Um, thank you so much, everyone. And for the board members and the, <laughs> and the employee. <laughs> the one person. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for everything. I think uh, I th now if we can get Kate Schmitz there tomorrow at noon, we'll be like in business. <laughs> All right. Uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna hang Ciao, out. Lucy. Ciao. Ciao. No. Good to see you. <laughs> Good to see you too. I'm planning my trip to New York already, so I can come see you and see everything. <laughs> exactly. We wait. We are waiting for you. <laughs> Anytime you want to visit, you're welcome. Oh, I'm so excited. I want to so bad. That's great. I hope you can make it during the show, maybe. So you That's can what I'm going to try and do. Oh, I'm fantastic. Try. Okay. Great. <laughs> thank you, David. All right. Yeah, thank you. Thanks, ciao, ciao. All right, y'all. More soon. All right. <laughs> you are <laughs> Exactly.